Hello again, welcome to video 3 of Data Engineering Zoom Camp week 5 and in this video I will show how to install Spark on a Linux computer. So I will use a cloud virtual machine from Google Cloud. So this is the virtual machine that we set up in week 1. Let me quickly open our GitHub repo and I already prepared some documents about setup. So this is what we will use. So we will use uh, this setup for Linux. This will work for usual Linux as well as uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. I tested it on uh, VSL already. Yeah, so now I want to show you how to do it with a virtual machine in the cloud. The machine I have is already running. Now let me connect to this machine and open this instruction. For this thing, we will need to install multiple things. So we will first need to install Java. Then we will install Spark. And yeah, let me show you how to do this. For installing Java, we need to have a specific version of GDK. So it should be either 8 or 11. This is a pretty old version of GDK. The current one is 17, but 17 will not work with Spark. So you need to have an older version of GVM. And yeah, so this page, it shows all the versions that are there. So you just scroll to 11 and select uh, which one you want, like uh, Windows, Mac or Linux. Actually for Windows there is a separate separate guide guideline and for Windows I would actually recommend to go with Oracle GDK, not with OpenGDK. For Linux OpenGDK is okay. So let me just get it. I will copy link address and then I will go to remote computer, Linux machine and here Maybe let me create a folder called Spark. So I'll go there and I will download this thing there. So I'll download OpenGDK. Now I need to unpack it. Start extract the files it was, then OpenGDK. So now it's unpacking. Now I will remove it. We don't need it anymore. So we have this directory now, GDK, and we are now in uh, slash spark so it's home directory slash spark now we need to create a variable i'll call it this variable will be called java home and it's important to create a variable that is called exactly like that because spark will use this directory in its scripts so we need to write it so I'll write home so home is uh, the same as tilde but home usually works better than tilde so then it will be home spark then this thing GDK 1101. So this will be the location of our GDK. It's Java home. And then we need to add this to our path to be able to use Java. So it will be Java home. And then all the executables live in the slash bin folder in Java home. And then we prepend it in the path like we did in week one. And now I can do which Java and it points to this location here and to check that everything works I will do Java minus minus version and we see that we have Java which is this version it's 1101 which is a pretty old version yeah so we have Java and by the way this thing let me put it in a file so the next thing we need to install is Spark so we install Java now we need to install Spark yeah, I already have a direct link, but let me show you how to get it. Download Spark. Go to Spark uh, main web page and then I select Spark release 303. So the, the reason I go with this one is because it works well for Windows. So if you feel adventurous, you can go with a more recent one. I do not guarantee it will work. You can try. Probably it will, but I still recommend to go with a bit older version. And then uh, we package type would be this one. Again, this is more important for Windows users, but to have some consistency, I will also use this Apache Hadoop 3.2. And yeah, now I just click on this link. I'll do wget again to download it. Okay, something is wrong. I don't think this is actually the right archive. So I need to go here and then select the right uh, mirror. And this is the link that I have. So this is the link for a mirror. Let me remove it and then download it. Yeah, so now the, the, this is the right link. Tar extract the files for was park. Okay, now it's extracting. I can remove it now. 
yeah, no directory in the archive. And I do the same thing as previously with Java. I do export Spark home, and then I need to give the full path to Spark directory. It will be again home, then Spark, then this. And then I do the same thing with path uh, one more time. Uh, spark home slash bin and then the rest of the path will go after that. So let me copy this as well. And now we can try to see if everything works. I will do spark shell. Okay, it seems it's working. So it, there are some warnings, but we can just ignore these warnings. Okay, it's doing something. And I have a thing I want to execute to test that everything works. Uh, it is Scala code. So if you don't know Scala, so first this thing data, this is a range of numbers. It's basically a list sort of of things of numbers from one to 10,000. And then what we do with this list, with this sequence of numbers, is we turn this into an RGD. So this is a thing internal to Spark, and now it becomes sort of parallel. So this thing is local, but now this thing distributed data is already, it lives on the cluster. And this thing, we take a look at all the numbers we have in our distributed data set, and we keep only ones that are below 10. So we execute this on a Spark cluster, which currently lives on this machine, on our Linux machine. And then at the end, we collect results, which are just numbers from one to nine. So this is a simple Spark job to make sure that things work. They seem to work. And now I don't want to type this every time I log into my computer. So now I want to put this to bash rc. So I will use nano to edit my bash rc file. So now I'll go to the end and I will paste it here. And I will now do control o to save the file. Enter now and control x to exit it. Now, for example, what I can do is just execute source bash rc. And then when I do this, the file will be re-evaluated and I will have all these variables. I can also just uh, close my connection because this is a remote machine and then enter it again. And now when I do which Java, it finds Java and which PySpark, yeah, it finds it. So now this thing is executed every time we open our terminal. And now I want to show you how to uh, use PySpark. Yeah, let me create a folder which I'll call notebooks. Yeah, let's let's do that. Uh, and then here I'll start Jupyter Notebook. Oh, because this is a remote machine, I will now uh, actually I need to connect to to this machine with Visual Studio Code. And I will go to this uh, ports tab and if you don't have it the way I open it is I click control control tilde I don't know how this thing is uh, like back code yeah control back code to open it and then I go to ports and I want to open port 8888 so this is the port that uh, Jupyter uses I think I was too quick actually with starting Jupyter so let me shut it down and go to this PySpark MD file, which has instructions for running PySpark. So I need to execute this thing. What this thing is doing, Python path is very similar to usual path, except it's for Python. So it tells Python where it needs to look for packages. And it says that Python, uh, when we try to import something, it should look in this location. It should try to look in the location Spark home slash Python. And this is where our PySpark lives in this location. And then it needs some extra dependencies. This, this is what these two lines do. So we need to execute them first and now start Jupyter. Otherwise, if we don't do this, then we will not be able to import PySpark. Okay, now I copy this thing, paste this to the browser. And now let me create a new notebook, hide it. And now I'll do import PySpark. And if I do now version, this should be the version we just installed. And I think here we have this file variable that says where this module lives and this module lives in the location that will, where we installed Spark. And now we need to import, I don't remember how, yeah, so from PySpark SQL import Spark session. 
So Spark session is a thing that tells how exactly we connect to Spark. And the session we will use will be this one. So here we specify how exactly we connect to Spark and we will say that we want to connect to a local master. So master is a thing for coordinating uh, jobs of a Spark cluster and we will use local one. So local means it will create a local cluster and star means it will use all the available CPUs. So we can say that we only want to use, let's say two CPUs or we can say let's use all of them. And then the name of our application will be test and get or create, yeah, if Spark session does not exist, create it. If it does exist, return it. Now it's creating, yeah, we can probably ignore. We saw this, uh, the same warning uh, when we were uh, executing Spark shell. Let me see what else I have. Yeah, so now what we can do is we can just download this taxi zone lookup file. This is here. I will put it right here. So now, yeah, we downloaded this file. So. You have seen this file already. Now let us read it with Spark. So to Spark, read CSV, and then we just put this file there and it will be our data frame. So now it is reading the CSV file and we can take a look at this. So we do Spark uh, data frame show. And we see that what happens here is um, doesn't know that this location ID, borrow and so on are the headers of the CSV file. So it doesn't know how to name these columns. So it gives them arbitrary names. Well, not arbitrary, but some names that don't make much sense. We need to tell Spark that it needs to load the headers. And for that, we need to do it like that. Now let me break it in multiple lines. So we need to specify options. And the option is, so we say header true, meaning that this CSV file has a header. And when we read it one more time, then yeah, it, it properly sees that this is the name of column. And now let's save it to parquet. So we can say data frame, write parquet, and then zones. Uh, this thing, uh, yeah, it was showing the progress of the job, but it was so fast, we couldn't see it. And now when we do LS, we see that it is actually a folder, zones. Let me go to, let me open terminal. So I'll go to notebooks and then, yeah, so this is a folder and inside this folder we have two files. So one is success, meaning the job is successful and this is our CSV file that we turned into Parquet. One more thing before we finish, this is working, this is good. One more thing before we finish, I want to show you that we need to forward another port, 4040. And if we go to localhost 4040 now, we will have so this is the interface for Spark Master. These are all the jobs that we executed. And this is something that we will use throughout the week to see what exactly our Spark is executing. That's why you need to also forward this port 4040. If, if you are doing this on a remote machine, if you're doing this locally, of course, you don't need to forward this port because the moment you do this, the moment you do this, Spark starts local master because we told it to do this. And uh, this master is accessible through this port. So it's running on that port. That's all I wanted to show you for this video. So this is how you install Spark on a Linux machine. For Windows, it's similar. Check it out. The only difference for Windows is you, well, first of all, you have Windows, but then you also have this Hadoop section that you don't need to do for Linux. I do not have Mac, so if you have Mac, uh, maybe you can help cover this part. I think that for Macs, the Linux guide will work without problems, but you never know. Yeah, so this is how you install Spark on Linux, and this is how you run PySpark. And in the next video, we'll write the first PySpark application, and we'll execute this locally, and we will use a high volume for higher vehicle data set for January 2021 to test a few things. So, see you soon.